So I have a student who has said that he failed an NBME and he's a month out from his exam. Uh, he's written some other details about his prior NBMEs, but he's he's got to fail on an NBME a month out. And I know some of you guys are going to have some NBMEs that are obviously not ideal scores. So whether it's four weeks out, two weeks out, etc., cetera, um, what should you do in terms of your exam? Should you postpone it? Okay, is there any way to augment your score as much as possible in the final month, two weeks? And is it safe to sit? What should we do? Okay, so before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. I really appreciate it. Give the video a like. I really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram at melman underscore medical, M-E-H-L-M-A-N underscore medical. Link is down below. Find me on Telegram. Recently created Telegram group and channel. Links are down below. Now let's start the clip. So uh, having a fail on a, on a NBME exam for the step one versus step two, et cetera. Um, a month versus two weeks out. So what should we do? And if you, my input is I generally as a tutor do not sign off quote unquote on a student sitting the exam. If he or she has a fail in the final month, it's just from experience. It's a tug of war. Listen, it's not that we can't get your score up as much as possible and have you pass. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, let's be optimistic. Sure. Uh, so we can make sure you really hammer out the NBME content, you know, high yield arrows. Okay. Like this is how we got to get you through the final month. I've made prior clips on how to study during dedicated. It's not that we can't be optimistic. It's about me signing off where, you know, we know for sure. So for example, just stay with me here. The internal pass mark, because we have a pass fail, you assimilate know, the internal pass mark is a 196, 197, right? So let's say on your NBMEs, even though 25 through 30 online now, uh, they're not giving a three-digit three digit numerical score. They're giving a probability of a pass, uh, which I actually find pretty uh, insufficient. It's like converting Celsius to Fahrenheit. We say, well, does that mean I should sit? What should I do? I would say that if we look at your three-digit scores uh, prior to uh, sitting your step one and you are getting a 200 versus a 205, at what point do we sign off and say, yes, it's safe to sit? I generally look for students to be getting three NBMEs above 205 before I will say, look, it's fine to sit, okay? It's just from experience because why cut it close? It's a tug of war between you as the student want to sit the step one as soon as possible. Okay, you've got your timeline. You might, you know, you say, I want to apply this year. I want to get the step one out of the way. I want to study for step two. Okay, or I got to get, I got to start rotations. My med school is forcing me to sit. There's going to be some limitations as far as uh, when you're allowed to sit. I understand. Okay, so it's a tug of war between like the student wants to sit as quickly as possible versus recognizing that if you take a fail on the USMLE, it's a bad fucking situation, all right? And I've made a prior clip saying, don't worry. Actually, I don't know if I've posted it before or after this one, but the point is, uh, there's another clip here on the YouTube that um, if you have failed, don't worry, you can still match, okay? You just got to apply broadly and into prelim years and transitional years. But my point is, it's infinitely worse to fail the fucking USMLE, to take a fail, than it is to be inconvenienced uh, by having to push your exam back. Okay, whether it's for step one or step two. So um, I generally want to see a student has three NBMEs over uh, 205. And many of you will have exhausted NBMEs already. You say, well, what do I do now? Like, I mean, if I retake them, should I be sitting the UWSAs, the free 120? So these are assessments we have to make, right? It's a, there's no cookie cutter answer for every student. It's a typically custom. I chat with students over Skype, but um I will generally assess the student's knowledge base. I want to make sure your endocrine is strong. You need to know high yield arrows, okay? If you know my high yield arrows PDF really well, and you can retake some of the NBME exams, do well on them, and we can basically say you're ready, okay? That's how I arrive at the conclusion for students. If I'm asking you basic endocrine, aldosterone, PTH, vitamin D, uh, DI versus SIDH, and you like you uh, are uncertain, you're wavering, you're vacillating as far as your answers are concerned, it's not a good sign, okay? So if you take a fail in the final four to two weeks, my answer is I want you to postpone, okay? About a month, and then you're going to uh, do more questions uh, from, you're gonna 
uh, take an advance. You're going to take a break from the NBME exams. You're going to do another month of QBank, usually USMLERX, not UWorld. And then you're going to come back into your review of the NBME exams, and you will be scoring higher at that point. That's often a strategy I implement for students, okay? Uh, four to two weeks out, and you've got to fail. Unacceptable. I don't sign off on it, and I delay an entire month. That's what I do. You know the deal. I'm going to continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time. That's it.